Latimer in room 407. I booked an alarm call for 7.30. No, 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 I'm not complaining. It's just that I, I want to cancel it. See, I don't want to disturb my father. Yes, but I want to go round to the flat and check if there's any mail. I thought your friend Richard Hartley Bennett was going to send it round. He is not my friend. He's an unreliable, drunken slob. God, I can't wait till he goes back to Australia. <sighs> well, it is his flat. You're only the tenant. He can stay there as long as he likes. <sighs> anyway, why are you so agitated? It's really very pleasant here. Dad, mm. I do not want to sponge off you until Richard Hartley Flaming Bennett decides to vacate the place. Tom, don't worry about the cost. It's all taken care of. Just treat it as a, a bit of a holiday. Mm -hmm. Before we go back to the flat. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Well, I thought I'd ask Mum if she'd mind doing my washing. Well, there is a laundry service here, you know. Yeah, Dad, I don't want to lumber you with a huge bill. Tom. <sighs> Can I tell you something? It's all right, I'll get it. Oh, it's your breakfast, Dad. Oh, good, good morning, sir. sir. Good morning. Ah, Thank you. <laughs> Don't pay this up. Thank you very much. Tom, aren't you having any breakfast? No, I'll, I'll uh, probably have something with Mum. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Tom. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mmm. Mmm. It's almost as good as your cooking, Tom. Tom? I hope I haven't woken you up. Doesn't matter. Got to get up sometime, I suppose. Are you all right? I suppose so. What day is it? Uh, Friday. Are you sure you're all right? Why are you asking? You don't really care. Of course I care. Harvey doesn't care. Uh, of course he does. He's your husband. Mm. I thought I heard the front door bell. I was in the garden. Well, I thought I'd pop in before I go off on my runs. Lovely. <laughs> what earth's that? Oh, it's Helen. I think she's a bit upset. Oh, Lord, what have you been saying to her? Oh, nothing. No, I, I, I've just been, you know, talking. Helen, darling, don't worry. I'm just coming up. I'll bring you a nice cup of tea. You get back into bed. <laughs> you didn't mention Harvey, did you? Well, we... Uh... <laughs> Just briefly, en passant. <laughs> Lord, Helen, darling, don't do anything silly, will you? <laughs> I'm coming right up. Honestly, Tom, you probably set her back a week. You should know better being a doctor. I didn't say anything. There are times your bedside manner leaves something to be desired. It... I... She's calmed down. A hot drink and a couple of Valium work wonders. I didn't realize she was such a bad state. How would you know? You haven't been round here for over a week. Well, I, I feel uncomfortable coming here, Mum. I come to see you, not my ex-wife. She's very unhappy at the moment. 
she needs family around her. But you are ex-family. She's got her own family. You know she doesn't get on with them. She doesn't get on with anybody. <laughs> she gets on with me. Well, that's because you're a very kind person. But she'll use you and then toss you aside like an old sock. Well, you don't know her as well as I do. Tom. Hmm? This cynical, chippy side of your nature is something I haven't ever seen before. And I don't like it. I still regard Helen as family. And when one of my family come to me in time of need, I don't turn them away. Well, actually, Mum, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so I was wondering if you'd do my dirty washing for me. <laughs> it's just so expensive at the hotel. And... Ah, good morning, Doctor. Morning, Dennis. Uh, Guardian, please. There you go. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> oh, uh, I'm glad you popped in, sir. I, um... I wanted to have a word about your mate. My who? Dr Hartley Bennett. Nice chap. The thing is, I cashed him a cheque for 25 quid. Oh, yes. <laughs> it bounced. Oh. Well, I didn't like to say anything. I mean, him being such a good friend of yours, so I thought the best thing is to ask you for the money and then you can sort it out with him. <laughs> Save embarrassment all round. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot. Uh, perhaps you'd like to settle your bill while you're here. <laughs> I, I cancelled my order, don't you remember? Ah, yes, but Dr Hartley Bennett put quite a few things down on your account. He said you knew all about it. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I forgot. Yes. So that's another £27.33. <laughs> what? Uh, cigars, mainly. He does like a good cigar, does Dr Hartley Bennett. <laughs> So that's a total of fifty-two pounds thirty-three pence, if you would be so kind, sir. Right. All right. <laughs> oh, Doctor Latimer. Oh, morning. That's lucky. Uh, <laughs> seventeen pounds forty-one, please. Seventeen pounds. Well, there's £7.41 for milk, eggs, bread and yoghurt, and then there's a tenner I lent Dr. Hartley Bennett last Saturday. <laughs> God, what a state he was in. Lost his cheque-book, his banker's card, the lock. I felt ever so sorry for him. Yes, well, that's very kind of you. Well, I knew it'd be all right, him being your brother-in-law. your friend. How much has he borrowed from you? What? No, no, he hasn't borrowed any money. It's the noise he makes. Actually, since you mention it, I did lend him 15 pounds. <laughs> when was this? Oh, it was ages ago, the first day he was here. He told me some awful story about having one of his bags stolen at Gatwick. <laughs> it contained his passport, his checkbook, everything. And you believed him, I suppose? I'm sure he's telling the truth. Well, there's no shortage of money, as far as I can see. Mm. Crates of lager coming and going like there's no tomorrow. He wouldn't lie. He's a friend of Tom's. I hardly know him. I mean, I just rent the flat from him. You're too trusting. That's your trouble. You're a fool to yourself. He's a fool to himself. <laughs> Always has been. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll sort it out and, um and uh, make sure you get your money back. Don't worry. And could you talk to him about the noise? It's horrendous. He has parties every night. Every night. I, I mean, you know us, Tom. We're not party poopers. We like a good time as much as the next man. <laughs> but he really is going too far. Well, the thing is, he is the owner of the flat. But um, I'll try... Ah, is that Dr Latimer? Uh, yes. I'm surprised you dare show your face. You tell him about my migraine, dear. The doctor says that I should have peace and quiet. My sister suffers from migraine. The doctor says it's imperative she has peace and quiet. <laughs> Did you hear it, Mr. Cawthorne? Terrible it was. Mm. 
My sister has a migraine. The doctor says she must have peace and quiet. <laughs> you couldn't fail to hear it, Miss Elliot. He's just below us. Dr. Latimer's going to have a word with his friend. Don't worry. Well, I haven't actually been here, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. Dr. Latimer! <laughs> the noise coming from your flat these last few nights is unbelievable. What are you thinking of, doctor? Ah, il dottore. <laughs> I must protest at your noise in the flat. Just step. Tell him you woke the bambina. Tell him. Yes, oh, no, 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 Keep the noise down, ladies and gents. There's people trying to sleep up here. Oh, hi, Tom. How you doing, mate? You missed a great party last night. Hmm. <laughs> There's still a slight redness all round there. It's really itching terribly. Yes, well, I'll give you something for that. And do try to remember not to wear anything synthetic. My dear Dr. Latimer, I never do. <laughs> of course not. I'm so glad you and your son like the Royal. My husband always maintains it's London's finest hotel. Oh, he's absolutely right. <laughs> it's going to be quite a wrench to go back to our little flat. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to see father and son getting on so well. Yes, we do. I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. I do hope things work out between you and your lovely wife. Oh, yes, I'm sure they will. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just a little hiccup. <laughs> Now, I, I want you to apply this during the day, and you'll find it will alleviate the itch. Thank you. Uh, would you excuse me a moment? Of course. Good morning, Dr. Latimer. Everything under control? Uh, Felicity, it is 20 to 11. You really ought to be here much earlier than this. Well, you're absolutely right. But I went to the young Conservatives' bash at the Savoy, and I didn't get in until after two. So I thought, what good would I be coming to work all washed out? Have an extra hour in bed, a nice long bath, and it'll pay dividends. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Felicity, I know that you're only standing in for Madeline until I can get a, a permanent replacement for her, and I'm terribly grateful oh. to you. But actually, you should be here before me. <laughs> <laughs> what time should I come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, your St. Winifred mornings? A quarter to nine. <laughs> you should be here at a quarter to nine every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, how uncivilized. <laughs> Still, if one's going to be a working girl and all that. Uh, yeah. Do you want a cup of coffee? I'm gasping for one. Uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I must get back to Lady Cranbourne. Not Dodie Cranbourne. I beg your pardon? How lovely, I must say, hello to <laughs> Auntie Dodie, how super to see you. <laughs> Flick, my darling, what are you doing here? You're not ill, are you? No, I'm working here. Darling, how novel for you. <laughs> oh, it's great fun. I'm a naughty girl, though. Ooh. Dr. Latimer has just told me off for coming in late. <laughs> <laughs> Punctuality never was your strong point, but she's a lovely girl. Oh. She's my favourite goddaughter. <laughs> now, mother and father, now, how are they? <laughs> Fine. Mummy's in on tea, but the villa. And uh, Pa's going out next week. Uh, uh, How's Uncle Oliver? Oh, you know Oliver. <laughs> he just goes from one board meeting to another. Now, would you like to come to dinner? Oh, Auntie Dodie, I'd love to. Um, Felicity, would you mind... Um... What about Wednesday? Wednesday. Um, Felicity, I think my next patient... Oh, is... do give Uncle Oliver lots of hugs and kisses when you see him. <laughs> What about Wednesday the 23rd? <laughs> Excuse me a moment. <laughs> yes, Wednesday seems to be fine. Oh, good. Ah, oh, Major De Winter, do come in. Uh, would you care to make yourself comfortable in the, in the, in the waiting room? And I, I'll be with you in a, in a moment. <laughs> So, I didn't get to bed till well after two. Oh, you poor thing. You must be exhausted. Let me take you for a coffee. 
You don't mind, do you, Dr. Latimer? Uh, well, I, I... Guess who I saw the other day? No, no, I... Nigel <laughs> Borwick. Nigel, I thought he was in South Africa. Well, so did I. He got involved in some terrible scandal. <laughs> You should see the flat. It's a tip. There are lager cans all over the place, cigarette ends everywhere, people everywhere. Oh, dear. And he's burnt a hole in my duvet. <laughs> oh, the man's a menace smoking in bed. Well, it is his bed. Yeah, but it's my duvet. <laughs> and I'm never going to sleep in it again. God knows what I catch. <sighs> uh, Margaret, would you call St Mary's and see what's happened to Mrs Fleming? And he's Fleming borrowing money, left, right and centre, from everybody. From the milkman, my newsagent, my neighbours. He's, he's even borrowed some lira from the Italian family downstairs. Oh, well, by the way, your mother rang. Your laundry's ready. Oh, good. Why don't you have it down at the hotel? Well, it's so damned expensive. See, if I go without breakfast and I get Mum to do my laundry, it'll be quite a saving. I thought your pa was footing the bill. Well, he'd like to, but if I let him pay for everything, it's going to be very difficult in a few weeks' time to say, well, thanks, Dad, I'm off back to the flat. Goodbye. Yes, I see what you mean. No, 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 I've got my pride, you know. I'm going to pay my share. No, I think you're right. Well, if you want to borrow some money, Tom, you, uh, you only have to ask. No, 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 it's, it's, it's very kind of you, Charles, but, um, I, I'll be all right. Well, thanks very much. Come in. Tom, hmm? I just wanted a quick word. Oh, I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, 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 uh, would you, would you like me to go? No, for goodness sake, it's your surgery. No, I just wanted to apologise to Tom. I'm... I'm sorry I was so silly this morning. I've had a long chat with your mother, and I'm going back now to sort it all out with Harvey. Mm. I'm sure a lot of it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how I tend to overreact to things. Anyway, thanks, love, for being so understanding. <laughs> yeah, um... Oh, Tom, mm? your laundry's all ready for you at your mother's. I ironed it this morning. Oh. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> That's OK, love. Bye. <laughs> love! It's unnerving, isn't it? Oh, I've never heard her be so pleasant. Must be the Valium. No, no, Tom, Tom, don't be so cynical. Look, I, I don't know what happened this morning, but at least she had the grace to come here and say sorry. But she's even done your ironing. I think you should just be a bit more charitable and give her the benefit of the doubt, instead of making churlish and facetious remarks. Yeah. <laughs> you lying toad, Harvey! <laughs> you don't deserve to be married to someone like me! I'm going back to Tom's mother! <laughs> <laughs> I think the Valium's worn off. <laughs> This way. Good try, sir. Mmm. That duck was delicious. The food's awfully good here, don't you think? Mmm. How was your cheese omelette? Fine. I do wish you'd eat something more substantial. You're not turning vegetarian, are you? No, no, of course not. It's just that I, I well, didn't thank want... goodness for that. It made living together very, very difficult. <laughs> Dad. Ah. What about some pudding? Um, no, not for me, thank you. Mm. Mm, maybe you're right. Perhaps we'll just have some brandy with our coffee. Yeah, it's terribly expensive. Tom, how many more times do I have to tell you it's not your problem? It's all taken care of. It'll cost you a penny. But, Dad, please but... leave it to me. Well, I... I... Now, gentlemen, can I tempt you to anything from the trolley? Uh, no, I don't think so, thank you. <laughs> My son is being enormously distracted. And I'm getting an enormous tum. <laughs> <laughs> However, I think we'll probably have some brandy with our coffee. Unless you'd rather have port. No, no, nothing for me, honestly, Dad. Well, we'll have something. Certainly, sir. I'll sell the wine later over. Thank you. Perhaps I could trouble you to sign the bill, sir. Oh, of course. Thank you, sir. Dr. Latimer, 
Yes. There's a call for you. Uh, Dr. Hartley Bennett. He says it's urgent. Oh, Lord. What's he done now? Excuse me, you've got a call for me. Number one, Bruce, house phone. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Tom. Richard, what can I do for you? Oh, I'm glad I managed to reach you, Tommy. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know I'm rattling my dags tomorrow morning. I'm sorry? I'm on my way. Uh, me and a few mates have bought a camper and we're driving to Morocco. The flat's all yours. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, for you. Uh, have a good time. Uh, thanks, mate. Uh, tell me, um, will you be coming back? Uh, no, I'll be going straight on to Oz. Oh, right. Well, have a great trip. Well, thanks, boy. Uh, listen, mate, I I've got to be in Dover for 8.30, so I won't be seeing you. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> so don't forget to keep the rent money coming. Hey, Janine, mine's the chicken vindaloo. <laughs> Did you remember the lagers? Oh, no. Dizzy cow. I've got to go to the bye, mate. Uh, right, uh, bye. Richard Hartley Bennett is leaving. The flat will be free by tomorrow. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, why don't we enjoy the rest of the weekend here and then go back on Monday? Dad. Ah, I ordered you a large one and I won't take no for an answer. I'm going back to the flat, not you. It's time you found your own place. I ordered some of these mints that you're so fond of. <laughs> it's for the best, Dad. It's time to go our separate ways. It could be the making of you. I mean, it could be just the thing to motivate you into getting it together with Mum. <laughs> now, be honest, Dad. You've never yet known what it's like to be on your own. Your separation has been cushioned by living with me. <laughs> now, for God's sake, say something, Dad. It's just that I'm very hurt, that's all. <laughs> yes, I know you are. I notice you left it until your friend Richard decided to go before saying all this. Well, I would have told you anyway, it's just a matter of choosing the right moment. Oh, I can see that. In the meantime, you were perfectly happy for us to stay together here in this magnificent hotel. Now, oh, don't worry, Dad. I wasn't expecting you to pay. Oh, come on, Dad. Look, I really wasn't expecting you to pay for me here, however long I stay. I appreciate your offering, but I would never have let you. Dad, come open up. Oh, if you want to behave like a child, that's up to you. Reception. This is Dr. Latimer, room 407. Can I book an alarm call tomorrow morning, please? 7.30. Certainly, Dr. Latimer. Yes, and one other thing. There's something I've got to do. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were on the phone. Yes, Could sir? you prepare my bill, please, because I'll be checking out in the morning. Uh, Tom, it's all right, Dad. I want to pay my own share. Uh, Dr. Latimer? Yes. It's all been taken care of. There's nothing to pay. Yes, I know, but if you could just split the bill between myself and my father, I'd like to settle my own account. Tom, can I just uh, say something? Dad, will you just hold on one second? Dad, I know what you're going to say, and I appreciate it, but I want to pay Tom, my own share. Will you please let me speak? Uh, Dad, I can't keep this young lady holding on anymore. We'll discuss it Tom. in a minute, all right? I'm so sorry about that. As I was saying, if you could just divide the bill between myself and my father, I'd be most grateful. But, Dr. Latimer, there's nothing for either of you to pay. I'm sorry? You and your father are guests of Sir Oliver Cranborn, our group chairman. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was going to tell you. It was just a matter of choosing the right moment. <laughs> 
I can't think why you didn't come in your own car. I'm not going to drive you back to the hotel, you know. I didn't expect you to. I'll just pick up my mail and take a taxi. Anyway, it seemed silly going to the flat in two cars. Besides, I thought I might give you a hand in cleaning up the place. Tom, I didn't mean to deceive you. But the more you kept on about my paying the bill, the more difficult it became for me to find the right moment to tell you that I wasn't. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. I can see you got yourself into a situation that you found hard to get out of. Thank you. But I also think he rather liked having me beholden to you. So that it would be harder for me not to let you come back. I'm right, aren't I? I don't want to live on my own, Tom. <laughs> Dad, do you think this is easy for me? Did you think I'd much rather say, stay, come back? But that would be the easy option. What good would it do? What would it achieve? As long as you've got me to lean on, you're never going to be able to stand on your own two feet. I'd still like to help you clean up. Fine. It'll be much appreciated. Then perhaps we can go and have some lunch together somewhere. All right. It's no good trying to use your charm on me. I'm not going to weaken. You're not coming back to the flat. Good Lord, what's going on? <laughs> it's our building. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's your building. <laughs> Anyway, uh, when I woke up, the room was full of smoke. God knows how it started. <laughs> but I didn't stop to think. I uh, just pulled on my kicks and raised the alarm. If it hadn't been for Dr. Hartley Bennett, we could have died in our beds. We owe our lives to him. Absolutely. He went round the whole building, making sure that everyone was safe. <laughs> He's a hero, a real hero. Oh, he is a hero. <laughs> So, as I understand it, Dr. Hartley Bennett, yours was the only flat that was damaged. I'm afraid so. Uh, but the insurance will cover it. The man's a saint. He's a hero, a real hero. <laughs> uh, Tom, disaster. The place is gutted. God knows how it started. <laughs> Hope you haven't checked out of your hotel, mate.
7. I booked an alarm call for 7.30. No, 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 I'm not complaining. It's just that I, I want to cancel it. See, I don't want to disturb my father. Yes, but I want to go round to the flat and check if there's any mail. I thought your friend Richard Hartley Bennett was going to send it round. He is not my friend. He's an unreliable, drunken slob. God, I can't wait till he goes back to Australia. <sighs> well, it is his flat. You're only the tenant. He can stay there as long as he likes. <sighs> anyway, why are you so agitated? It's really very pleasant here. Dad, mm. I do not want to sponge off you until Richard Hartley Flaming Bennett decides to vacate the place. Tom, don't worry about the cost. It's all taken care of. Just treat it as a, a bit of a holiday. Mm -hmm. Before we go back to the flat. <sighs> <laughs> yep. What are you doing? Well, I thought I'd ask Mum if she'd mind doing my washing. Well, there is a laundry service here, you know. Yeah, Dad, I don't want to lumber you with a huge bill. Tom. <sighs> Can I tell you something? It's all right, I'll get it. Oh, it's your breakfast, Dad. Oh, good, good morning, morning, sir. Good morning. Ah, there we are. Thank you. <laughs> I'll pay this up. Thank you very much. Tom, aren't you having any breakfast? No, oh, I'll, I'll uh, probably have something with Mum. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 